Welcome back everyone, my name is Eltamar and we are going to be continuing our let's play of Pillars of Eternity. Truly put your foot in it this time. Where we left off last time, we're about to talk to Degnos, I guess. Adolf Entry, you go to visit the Luminous Bathhouse, yes? Perhaps, why do you ask? My satchel. Like a fool, I left it inside. My ship is due to sail from Nekataka with the next high tide. If I do not find it, my Kasita will surely throw me overboard. Merla, I cannot swim. A look of horror spreads across his face. I would go by myself, but uh, the guards, they bar the doors to me without my casita present. They think I am a thief. He stares at his feet. His hands. Uh, he stares at his feet, his hands an anxious twisting knot in front of him. Are you a thief? No, of course not. His eyes widen and fright and he waves his hands frantically before you in a warding gesture. I would go by myself, but uh, the guards. Yeah. They bar the doors Why can't you ask your casita to retrieve present. it? I would rather her not discover my incompetence. His eyes dart to the side as if looking for something or someone just outside of his vision. I'm sure she's well aware. I would go by myself, but uh, the well, you know if I see it. Ade. You mean it? Agrasima, Agrasima, I am in your debt. The air of misery suffusing him lifts for a moment. His eyes go wide and he grins. You notice the light sheen of sweat on his upper lip. He shifts his weight from foot to foot and stares at you intently. There is, uh, one thing. Madiko, how could I have forgotten? He tugs at the collar of his shirt as if he's suddenly much too hot. If you could, do not open the satchel. The contents are... The information is... He searches for the word. Propriety. You understand? I would never. When I first saw you, I knew you were a trustworthy sort. I knew. He clasps your hands in his. Please, when you find the satchel, meet me at Peddler's Canal in Queen's Birth. Or your friends will be waiting to beat me up for stealing someone's information. You must gather your party before. I think I'm becoming a pessimist because of this game. I just assume everyone's out to ambush me now in this game. And, you know, it's probably not untrue. Any satchels over here by the man with a dong? Nope. I mean, that's kind of a weird statement. Generally, most men have dongs. The clear majority. Really? No satchels there. Upstairs, probably? Maybe? Hey, you guys see a satchel? No? Okay. No satchel over there. What are you There's a satchel. Get out. Yeah, I'm leaving. I you need a satchel. Your party before venturing forth. If there's an ambush at Peddler's Canal, I'm going to be super displeased at this Dagnos guy, and I'm going to murder him. I'm going to break his own arm off and stab him to death with it. You must gather your party before venturing forth. Hmm? I got it. Gotta love that pathing. I think the new patch, which just came out recently, <laughs> might have messed with the pathing more than it was before. Although I don't think there's any changes to pathing, so maybe I was just getting lucky before. We've been there. We've been sort of around this district. Let's just do a quick pass of the streets, see if there's anyone named we haven't talked to yet. I wonder if there's an always on for names. Is there? Tooltip display. Is that leaving on all the time? That didn't really help us, that's just tooltip display. And we probably shouldn't keep it like that. Um, continue movement on engagement, no font. Sure. Colorblind mode, no. Screen edge, color show news, emotion. Smart camera, gives. Cage cursor. Graphics, maybe? We have a solid HUD background, but I don't see anything there. Okay. Toggle interactables. We're going to set it to... Bracket. 
There we go. That's much easier than pressing tab. I don't know why I pressed tab there. Now it's such a force of habit that I'm going to do it all the time. We talked to Emita. Emita, maybe. I don't know her name. We've sort of been here, but we didn't kind of walk along this path too much. Well, it's looking like we talked to everyone important. This will also help us not miss important people. Alright, we're leaving from the north exit. I wonder if that'll take we us to Serpent's Crown. We've already been up there, though. Um, what's next? I guess we can do the Queen's Birth thing. We might as well go get our ambush done. Didn't we need, to, like... A group of Principe soldiers approach you in the streets. Well, that's not good. Luckily we're in good standing with them, so we might be okay. That's a lot of them, though. A moment. Sure. A tall, wiry man blocks your path. He wears a sly smile, as one might wear the most comfortable trousers. I saw you speak to my dear amico Degnos, so I thought to myself, why, Talfor, you must meet him too. Arrayed about him are a small group of kith, well-armed and armored. What business is it of yours who I talk to? Degnos is an associate of mine. His success is important to me, as it impacts my own. His shrug is... in soyance. Personified, slight and carefree. Your errand boy lost his satchel. I'm returning it to him. That is good to hear. So rare it is that I am glad of a stranger's interference. Telfor renders you a slight bow and a crooked, almost jesting smile. Would you like an escort to Queen's Bereth, Fentre? You never know what rough types may be about, and I would hate to see you waylaid. Am I not already waylaid? Were I a more fragile man... I might have found offense in your vulgar accusations. His smile is sharp, drawn in irony. It promises violence. He winks. That won't be necessary. Ah, Aimiko. The streets of Neketaka. They are too dangerous to travel without an escort. I insist my associates and I see you safely to your destination. It pains me to impose. But I must ensure Degnos has everything he needs for his next voyage. He smiles wide, the corners of his mouth crinkling with mirth. You know what? I'll be on my way. If you wish to follow, it's your business. A gracious offer. We accept. He nods to his fellows, who smile and murmur agreement. Perguano, let us be off. We're still going to fight them, aren't we? And probably more. We probably just made this worse for ourselves. We made it here. Relatively oh, yeah. soon. About earlier, uh, me saying I ain't seen nothing in your f She saw his tears in the head? Oh. Truth. It can't be what I do. Suppose I can forgive a friend a time or two. If you're willing to help me, in exchange, I mean. Well, I ain't one for knowing gods and prophecies, but I can be sharing with you the ancient pirate secret. Trist, do you? Of course. I wouldn't mind a reprieve. Just for a night or a few. If you got something, tell me. Rum. Barrels of rum. Drink it till you see free of me, and you'll be sleeping through Kraken attacks. Ach, my little privateer. You have news for me? Uh, no, not yet. There's Dignus and Aveta, and I'm willing to bet we're going to be attacked yeah, right here. So let's get our people ready. What can I do you for? Almost guaranteed this is going to be a fight. Hey, as you wish. Ecosi, Fentry, you have found the satchel. Indeed. Tiverus, Belfetto, this is magnificent. A smile breaks across Dignos' face. I am in your debt, Aimeko, truly. He takes her hands in a tight, sweaty grip. Please, take this. You do not know what you have done for me. What I've done for you is not killed you for handing me 37 coppers. I get more from, like, beating up a random peasant. Anyways, he hands you a few coppers, a sheepish grin stretched across his face. I will reward you properly someday. You will see. I don't think you will. Our business is resolved. And my business is my own. Be on your way. I have no time for it. Well, I'll take care of it. 
Well, where's the dude that was gonna ambush me? What was the point of him coming along? I'm so confused. Ecosi, I do not have the time to talk. I must help a vet with our inventory. Well, whatever. I mean, it worked out in the end, I guess. I'm just so confused as to what the point of that was. Let's look up that stolen guy, steely guy. That's not it. That's not it. No. 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 We've already done that, but it's still kind of there. All oh, right, for Tenno and the Breast Citadel, let's go there. We haven't been there yet. Who's Akima? You return. Can I be of service? No, I remember now. You're just a tell me where to go type person. Did we ever go into this district home? I think we did. All these things I'm missing. Why is there? Oh right, there's a Zora group here. Let's talk to the admiral. Why disturb Lord Admiral, eh? eh? The imp glances left and right with evident anxiety. Not doing anything wrong. Eh? Go away. Zarb's flanking the imp chitter to themselves and glance around the district. Desurl sent me. Eh? No, no interruptions to the plan. Lord Admiral's work too important. The Zarb's raised their claws to block out the sound of the imp's voice. D get him, Cullies. The imp points to you and screeches at the top of his lungs. What the? F really? <laughs> All right. Hey, dear, tank that one. We need some big, big AoEs. And we need peasants not to be in our way. Why is the guard not intervening in this giant fight? No, it's cool, there's just a big fight breaking out in the middle of your city and you're not getting involved at all. into these skirmishers. Alright. Yes. That was interesting. I don't really know what that was all. Ooh, a ring. Ibis. Flame Ward plus 4 burn armor plus send all defenses against fire attacks. Being critically hit with a fire attack will cause interrupt and give you negative 10 will penalty. Plus one int. A bunch of copper. And a map fragment. Which we can assemble apparently. I'm not really sure what it assembles into. Do we have the rest of the map? What appears to be a map in this inventory? Yeah, I don't know. As you wish. We have a map apparently. Let's go to the place we were gonna go before, before that random little encounter. How's our experience doing? I would like to get us one more level. I think tenth level we can start you know annihilating some bounties. Grass Citadel. We haven't been there yet. At all. And we haven't really fully explored the Sacred Stair or Serpent's Crown yet either. A voice calls out to you from an alleyway. Nikitaka's poorer districts host more dark than light. The streets and alleys, the only housing many Hawana know. As you pass by one of the alleys, a voice calls out. You turn to see a hand fold out from the darkness. The pale balm, balm balances a figurine, more silhouette than statue in the dim light. And when you try to get a clearer look, the fingers fold back up. Magic, the voice says. It summons beasts to harry your enemies. We'll save you in a pinch, in a city as dangerous as, as this. Surely your life's worth a, fil a few silver. Torchlight glints from the man's teeth. You want, you follow. The figure withdraws into the darkness. Okay. 
Within the alley, a torch ignites, revealing a tunnel entrance. You pass through the archway. On the other side, a group of Pinchipi hold torches and blades. Bodies stuff the corners, eyes dry in the flickering flames. Some with their hands bound, others face down with grime. Strangely Vashel, isn't it? The pirate draws his weapon. Set our little cheese, and these foreign rats come tick 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 chittering in. Hand over the figurine. Now. The Principi leader stares at you blankly before taking a step back. His crew glances around, a few reaching for their weapons. The leader scowls, Merla. You'd make quite the pirate. Perhaps you should roll it around in that clever head of yours. At ease, boys. Hand over the figurine. We got the figurine. Farewell, Fendra. He bows to you. The party before venturing forth. Should've just killed them. Oh well. We got ourselves a figurine for free. I guess. We should have just beaten them to a pulp. Although what we might have just gotten some like normal items. The brass oh. citadel. Oh. What is your business at the brass citadel? Just looking around. You're the watcher. The one who nearly caused a riot in Queen's birth. His mouth quirks in a grin. The Grand Secretary Atsura wants to meet you. His office is on the lower level of Imperial Command. Up the stairs. He points to the steps. Once you're inside, go downstairs through the room on the right. Is he in charge around here? Hazanui Karu is the ultimate authority in the Brass Citadel. He crosses his arms over his chest in salute. But she must endure the sops at the palace. He rolls his eyes. When she returns, I'm sure she will grant you an audience. For now, Atsura Nui speaks with her voice. Thank you, random guard. Leave. No valiant spy is coming through on my watch. Excuse me, I need I'm to go a through. Merchant. I have business inside. Guns, maybe dogs, powder house. Our powder house. You must think lounge. I'm an idiot. Back. You've got one thing right. Let's try the gunsmithy first. We're trying to find that thief, recall, if you recall. Uto. Ooh, Where some there's loot. A pick, there's a way. It's finished. What is it? They won't see me. Anyone care? Nope. Ooh, that was close. That one we're just not going to get. It's too... Well, first of all, it's difficulty 14. Yes. And second of all, we can't get in there. The man greets you with arms crossed over his chest. He has a massive scar tissue where his left eye would be, and his hands are knotted with bulging tendons. Looking for a pistol or an arquebus? Rawatai makes the finest guns in Aora, and I make the finest guns in Rawatai. Let's see. What is a dragon's dowry? It's a legendary quality Archibus. Which grants Dragon's Breath. 10% chance for the wielder to suffer 10 burn damage on launching an attack. Plus 25% damage as burn. Unfit for melee, so bad deflection against melee attacks. Blunted critical, so does less crit damage. And it's inaccurate. Negative 5 ranged accuracy. But then it's legendary, so it goes plus 13 anyways. So, And then there's Scordio's Trophy, which is a Pistola, and it's superb. Scoring hits with this weapon grants a flank or stacking negative 15% recovery time with melee weapons for 30 seconds. Wow. Crit shot. 20% crit damage. Blunted criticals though, negative 25% crit chance. Decent. Gun. There's some. It's a worm tongue. That sounds fancy. Really short range is what it is. It's a royal bronzer. Ooh. Kind of fancy, but 5 turn reload is a long one. Okay. Well, it's got some decent stuff, I guess. I'll take care of it. Hang on, Looking wait. For a pistol or an what makes your gun so special? Craftsmanship. He holds out a knotted, his knotted hands, keeping them entirely still as he speaks to you. They're covered in small burns and scars that blur the varied pigmentation of his skin. If you ask my superiors at Imperial Command, they'll tell you our main exports are salt, peter, and metal. Those are just things. They're prized because of what we do with them. He reaches under the counter and pre presents a blunderbuss, holding it out for your inspection with his ever-steady hands. It's a high-quality piece. Rawatayan industry is about discipline, precision, mastery of a careful art. Those qualities guide all that we build. He puts the blunderbuss away. Cool. You must get I kind of might want that pistol later, but we'll, we'll come back to that. We're saving our money for boat stuff currently, so that we can do boat things with it. Anyone around here? We really need to find that schmuck so we can get our item back for that one girl. Berteno, that's what we need. 
I don't have time to chit chat. The thin Valian glances over your shoulder with an expectant frown. He stares up at your head, distracted, before quickly turning away. You stole a pair of gloves from the dark cupboard. Give them to me. Not a chance, Aimiko. He narrows his eyes at you. Fasina sent you, didn't she? Bostinago, just for these. Shaking his head, he pulls a pair of fine gloves from his pocket, studying them with evident disappointment. Soft as down, but not a single fence willing to pay me a fair price. Maybe they've got imp stink all over them. You're gonna have a hard time selling an Archmage's gloves for fast coin. <sighs> Should have guessed these were bad luck. Well, it's too late to go making smart decisions, isn't it? No, it isn't. He opens his mouth to say more, but something to the southwest distracts him, and his expression fills with dread. Here he comes. And I'm too late. If Hamuto doesn't give me an extension on my debt, I'm a dead man. Keep your mouth shut and follow my lead. Glancing you, Bertano shrugs and swallows down a lump in his throat. That's a big dude. And several... soldiers? A unit of steely-eyed sailors approach the docks, clutching pikes and firearms with quiet professionalism. At their head stands the tall Omoa, in a mustard yellow uniform. He turns his attention between you and Berteno. So, Berteno, you hired a mercenary, or else a negotiator. That coin should have gone toward your debt to me. Amuto rubs a long scar that extends the length of his neck. Huh? No, I didn't. Uh, that is, uh, I would never go behind your back. I... Berteno's voice falters, and he turns to you with sudden panic. Berteno, shut up. The adults are talking. Muto's eyes brighten and he nods. The soldiers around him chuckle with approval. I like dealing with people of substance. He nods thoughtfully. This is a private matter. Your interference is unnecessary. Muto spreads his hands in a peaceful manner as his soldiers level their guns at Berteno. Well, since you can't pay up, take him. Fair is fair. Actually, you sound more reasonable than I was led to believe. Do I? One can be adherent to the tenets of maritime law. And still be seen as a monster. Take him. Berteno glances around, growing panic evident on his, in his frantic movements. He freezes when one of the Hamuto's men raises a gun and points it at his face. Enough. I have work for you. He snaps his fingers and readies to depart. Before you go, I need the gloves Berteno stole. No. Berteno's assets are mine to dispense with as I Now we have a problem. I'll hear no more of it. He stole them from the wizard Archimir. Do you want that on your conscience? These are Archimir's possessions? Hamuda looks at Berteno with a grudging respect. I would no more incur the wrath of an archmage than I would stick my head inside a dragon's maw. There you have it. If our business is concluded at last, then I take my leave. Hamuda nods to you and turns to leave, his soldiers ushering Berteno onward. I mean, fair is fair. I'm not gonna fight some dude for a crappy thief. as we steal things from the dock. Here's the difference. I'm a good thief, and I can back my thievery up with death dealing most of the time. There are occasions where death dealing fails me. That's not often. So this is the powder house. I wonder if we're allowed to go in. It says we are. Nope. But this area is strictly off limits. The young guard draws himself up to his full height, crossing his arms. What is it? Private property of the Royal Deadfire Company, that's what. He eyes you warily. Can I just look inside? Sorry. My orders come from the Hazanui herself. Okay, bye. No point in getting this whole district angry at us so far. With sails unfurled and sword held high. To battle for glory and row tie. Hello the Oh. She looks at you and jumps. Sorry, you startled me a little. She blinks at your twisted visage, lasting with chagrin. You in the market for some supplies, friend? Yeah, Take what do you got? A ring of greater regeneration, 3 health every 6 seconds, that's not bad. A charm of bones, plus 2 int, plus 10 accuracy against the vessels. Grants Call of the Restless, but only 10 charges. And Gauntlets of Ogre Might, actually might be pretty good. Fate might is done, sort of good. To Wakoyo Nui when your hands and your temper have healed. Come to Gok too? My punishment's over, you know. She looks away and crosses her arms carefully to hide her burned hands. Why were you holding a red-hot cannonball? She glances back at you, a look of defiance in her eye. I punched my captain. It's as if the mere mention of the incident takes her back to it. Her face darkens with anger, and a bitter snarl transforms her features. So maybe he shouldn't have insulted my aim. Like I don't know the difference between a smooth and rifled boar. She shakes her head quietly, stewing. 
He deserved it. He asked if I knew where I was pointing my cannons. I told him to bend over in front of one and we'd find out. It escalated from there. Anyway. She shrugs. I'm not reporting back to Wakoyo, that's for sure. I crewed on mercenary ships before this. Come to think of it, that suited me better. She grins impishly. Still a scramble root at heart, I guess. But I'm plenty experienced. Maybe I'll see if anyone's looking for an expert cannoneer. Me, I am. I could use an experienced cannoneer. She looks you up and down, considering your offer. Don't take this the wrong way, but I only crew with captains I know. Either personally or by reputation. I'm sure you're capable. But I don't know enough about you. Come on, I need you. Yet. Oh, her eyebrow, quir her eyebrow quirks up in hopeful suggestion. Let's talk again when you've made a name for yourself. I've killed like a bunch of pirates and That's stuff. The last time I ship out with some soft Well, let's see if the fleet master's got anything for us to do. Any quests. That looks like it'd be... That's way high. Okay. Fleet master, Wakoyo. Clear skies, my friend. Wakoyo crosses his arms and tips his head to the side. A long scar traces a path down his face, curving sharply where his cheek rises with a smile. Greetings. The boats of our decorated armada have orders which spread them thinly across the archipelago. Rawatai finds itself in need of a privateer. His brow rises as he speaks the word. Your ship, unmoored from debtfire politics, is an asset I would grasp with both hands. An arrangement can help us both. You will empty the seas of competition in exchange for profit. Hunting ships for Rautai? Where do I begin? This courage will win you many battles, I think. Me too. A Scylla wave skipper is your first target. A pirate shirking any pretense of lawful conduct in the open seas. Okoyo grimaces and itches at his scar. Yep. Most excellent. A Scylla commands the Voyager River Dragon, which pesters a group of islands to the southwest of Port Maje. Okay, I'll get on that. You must gather your we have so many bounties that we haven't done yet. That's okay. We'll get to it. Our business is concluded. Oh, right, okay. For sure. What is this place? This is, is Imperial Command. The Ranga Nui. Tamara. And it's a commemoration. So you fell for all of Natehi's flowery talk of cultural pride. Tamara crosses her arms. Maybe the Royal Deadfire Company should handle its dirtier business with more discretion. Perhaps we will at that. Now get out of here. We're done. Not my fault you suck at negotiation and finding things. Alright, so let's see what we can loot. Leave it no one cares if we go into this room. Oh, but there's people in here. I don't think we're gonna get that. Sabor me. A young woman with a bright wide smile and eyes to match raises her head and gives you a quick but enthusiastic wave. Then, with an exaggerated look of embarrassment, she stops herself and crosses her forearms over her chest. I always forget that part. Say, you're the Watcher of Cad Nua, aren't you? I've never met anyone famous before. Tell it to the Cannoneer outside, she doesn't believe that I'm famous. Except the Hazanui. She yells at me sometimes. Her grin widens impossibly. You're the Quartermaster, can you sell me something? Her face scrunches up in disappointment. I really wish I could, but my supplies are for the Royal Deadfire Company oh, and our allies. We have to do has a newie's orders. Action stuff. Maybe if you impress her or Atsura, they could make an exception. Has a newie yells at you? Oh, all the time. She screws her face up in a look of mock seriousness. Still, she can't help from smiling. Where's my Whiteley? Stop daydreaming. So bore me, if you lose the ledgers again, I'll have you clean the latrines. <laughs> At this last comment, she leans close, her eyes wide, and voice low with awe. All this time, I didn't realize she knew my name. Are you always this excitable? It's just, this is my first time away from the rough country. She blushes. I'd heard there were thick, green forests and sandy beaches without a storm in sight, but I never imagined this. She shakes her head in wonderment. You must have traveled lots, seen all sorts of amazing places. Sabormi folds her hands under her chin, watching you intently. Sure, I just gotta get Aethas to stop stepping on them. Now, that sounds like an adventure. She sighs dreamily. I love Rawatai, but it's hard to go a week without seeing storms, or hearing about mudslides burying a village somewhere. Her buoyant expression sags, but only for a moment. Okay, bye. I'll see you done. I'm gonna go rob you just a little, though. It wasn't really worth it.
I guess we're out of time on this video. We're at 30 minutes, so we'll end here and then we'll uh, see if we can't go inside that door, possibly. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Take care.